It's fantastic to look back to 2013 when we were put on the shortlist for competition to develop the mansion. At the time we hadn't actually finished any luxury housing in the centre of the city so the client was taking a huge risk. We'd been put forward by Westminster, who really enjoyed our work nearby on South Moulton Street. And I remember we sat down together, David and I, and started sketching and we're saying, what's unique about this site in the centre of the city with such beautiful historic buildings nearby? And we just touched on this idea of the garden because very few buildings housing projects in central London have beautiful gardens. So we really wanted to make the most of this connection between the city and the garden and, and this beautiful housing sort of framed around that. In terms of our approach to the building, we look extensively at the history of an area and then we design a modern building that really talks to and is in conversation with the past. And we came up with this idea that you don't just see a building, you see part of an historic part of London. So we kind of make more than just architecture, we make a whole sort of spatial sequence. And I suppose that embodies the aspirations of the project to be more than just an average housing scheme. For us, the city is our client. We see each project as part of a bigger tapestry. So we want to make sure that every project gives something back to the city as well as being part of the city. The mansion is a reinterpretation of a Marylebone mansion block. A beautiful building where several apartments come together but you live with a sense of luxury and individual service. There are 23 apartments all together and each has access to a beautiful garden and wonderful swimming pool and spa places below ground. But the main sort of focus is a very generous entrance hall which allows passers-by to glimpse into the building. The most significant challenges of this project are that it's situated in the heart of an historic city. So we're surrounded by listed buildings, we're in a conservation area, and we're building on top of a tube station, which you don't see, but it makes it very, very demanding technically. You've got these kind of constraints from above and around, really informing the design that you make and how you can build it. I think a lot of architects would balk at, at the amount of kind of limitations and restraints placed on you, but for us, that seems to inspire us. Because we're in the centre of the city, we are surrounded by neighbours, so we sculpt the form and direct the new windows away from neighbours to not invade their privacy, but also push back the form of the building to ensure that they still have good access to natural daylight. We've developed these beautiful slender vertical fins which, when you're inside, direct your view out of the building so you see the garden, but it makes sure that you don't look into private space nearby. It's also important when we're building to take a great deal of care to not interrupt or create nuisance for our neighbours, so that's something we really, really try always to imagine what it would be like for us if we were in their shoes. One of the extraordinary things about this project was that we were aiming to make the outside of the building a beautiful pink colour. And we found this fantastic, really unusual, beautiful colour called teole, which means tea with milk. We worked with lots of potential terracotta suppliers, went to Barcelona, flew to Holland to try and find exactly what we were looking for. And then once we found the supplier, we had to develop the shape and form of each component of the building. So it was a complete labour of love. It's taking an old craft of terracotta and bringing it into a modern idiom. In terms of our role on the project as architects, we come up with the complete concept for the building. It's a total work of art. And we work with interior designers to let them know and to communicate to them those kind of values so that when they take over and actually come into the detailed specification, perhaps of bathrooms and kitchens, they take that ethos that we establish and they build that same aim as it comes down to the detail. That said, when it came to the public areas of the building, the extraordinary lobby into which you enter, we very much were hands-on. In terms of a project of this nature, it doesn't come with a template or a budget. It really doesn't. It's about everybody putting their best foot forward to come up with the best solution for the site and the value comes out of that effort. So it really wasn't constrained by a preconceived budget. 
We have a mechanism where we review periodically how things are progressing on site, what the actual costs are, and then it's renegotiated as you go along. Our fee arrangements are a conversation that evolves over time. Achieving that kind of sublime architecture that looks effortless is what it's all about. We really don't want the effort, the 12,000 hours we put into this project, to be, to be read. We want it just to be a beautiful piece of architecture.